Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at user forms. So we'll be creating our first basic user form and we'll be using VBA, so some of the scripting that we've looked at in past videos, to one help us open that user form and to submit some basic information. So we're basically going to use this form to capture some information and then paste it into our Excel sheet. Uh, and obviously we want this to be um, obviously of use to you so we're going to actually use our dynamic uh, row finder that we've previously used so that when we submit new data from our user form obviously it's going to put it onto a new row in our spreadsheet. So without further delay we'll jump straight into it. So the first thing we need to do is to design our user form. Uh, from all I've done on here is I've created a new uh, file and actually I've saved it as the wrong format. I'm just going to go file, save as, uh, go browse, uh, desktop, and we'll save this as an Excel SM. So this is a macro enabled workbook. So that's all we need to do there. Uh, yeah, so we can now create our user form. So you can do Alt F11 or obviously open your macros uh, de developer window. And all we're gonna do is when we're in this window, we're gonna go into insert as we do with adding a module, but this time we're gonna go to user form. So you click that and you'll see that we have a new folder added for us. So this is form. So any user forms that you add into your Excel will be uh, nicely stored in this little folder that's expandable on the side here. And you'll have your basic user form here as well. And what we need is our little toolbox so that we can start to design our user form. As you'll see down the left hand side, there are a number of options that we can use for the various parameters within our user form. Uh, we're not going to jump into those too much, but by all means you can have a look at those when you're working through uh, and they'll just give you a bit more, um, should we say, uh, flexibility and sort of personalization when you're working with your user form, uh, but we won't be going into that today, maybe in a future video. So all we want to do is add simply two fields to this user form and we're going to have a first name and last name and we'll also have a submit button so that obviously once you've populated that information you can then submit, submit it uh, to the Excel sheet. To do that we're only going to be using these two options here. You've got the label, what's the second one in, in our controls and we've got the text box. So we'll just click label and then you'll see once selected you've got this cursor um, or this crosshair now available. Click anywhere on your form and it'll put a label in for you. Oh, I just double click there so ignore that. So if I just click my label and you can see I can now go in and type uh, what I want to call it. So we're going to call this one first name and I'm going to do a colon and let's just reduce the size down on this. If I click off that, you know, I'm then going to go into another label and this one I will call uh, last name, do another colon, and let's just reduce this in size again. Okay, so now we've got the labels, we just now need to do our um, our text boxes. So if we do, uh, let's go into here, and we're going to call this one, no, actually I didn't, I'm not going to change the name on that, obviously I changed previously when we did the labels, all I'm going to do is just maybe make this a bit tiny, a bit bigger, uh, just so it's a bit easier to work with. And then we'll do exactly the same here, so click on text box, click on our sheet and you'll see it'll put one in there for us and as I'm doing on the screen now if you want to make that any bigger all you need to do is just use obviously the variable grab options around uh, around the box and you'll see very helpfully as default our user form comes with this uh, dotted grid so that enables us to obviously work with various sizing and obviously the layout of our user form the last one we're going to do is if we go underneath the label you see we have command button just going to select that come back into my user form again and just paste that somewhere here. Um, obviously not being too precious about the layout and if it's in the center. And then all I'm gonna do from this one is if I now look down these options down the side here, you see I have, I've got the name. So the name is, and this is probably why I was worth, I'll cover this off in a second actually. So the name is obviously what this button refers to. And that's gonna be important to us when we're actually writing our BBA script as that's gonna be the, uh, the name is what we're gonna to need to refer to. If you go down to the caption, then this is where you can just change, obviously, the, the caption was displayed in this button. All I want to do is put the word submit. And if I was going into one of these text box, you'll see the name you can see at the moment is defined as text box one. And the second one is text box two. Also, just to carry off, if I was going to labels, you can see my first name is a label is label number one, and the second name is label number two. So that's how you find out which each um, uh, particular part within your user form is uh, named and obviously you need to know those names if you want to refer to it in your VBA script. 
So that is the extent of our form we're going to be using in this uh, demo. So the first thing we need to do is to be able to open this form. So to do that, I'm going to insert a button into our Excel sheet. So I'm going to go into the Developer tab, Insert, and then select this top left-hand button here, and you'll see another crosshair. Click Select, and there's no macro there to do at the moment, so it's going to click OK, and just make that button a bit bigger so we can actually see that on the screen. And I'm going to just call this, um, we'll call it uh, open form. And you don't need to put it in capitals, but it, that's just what happens. <laughs> so we've got our open form button here. If I right click this button, uh, okay, so what we need to do, if I was to right click this button and do assign macro, obviously we've got no macros available to us in this sheet. And we need to have a macro assigned to this button just so that it does something. So I'm going to go cancel that for the time being. I'm going to come back over to the, this pane on the left here, and this time go insert and open a module. So we'll call this, so we're going to put a subroutine in here, basically just to open uh, the form when that button is clicked. And then obviously we can assign this macro to the button. So we'll call this sub um, open uh, form, something very basic. And all we need to do in here is simply put user form one dot show as easy as that. So, and actually it might help if I typed user form correctly. So user form one, there you go. It looks a bit better now with the formatting. And we know that's the name because if you go into our user form, we can see that it is named user form one. Uh, you can see obviously in this part here underneath forms and also when we went into the little name section there of these are uh, the properties for that user form. Uh, you can obviously change your user form if you wanted to, obviously as in what it's called, but I often preferably just leave it as user form one, uh, just because it just makes it a bit easier. I personally find for obviously navigating them if you have more than one form. So now that we've got this macro created, all we need to do is go back to our button, right click and go assign macro. And you can now see we have the open form macro available to us. Select it, hit OK. And if we click off the button, every time we hit the open form button now, you'll see it's opened our user form up for us. And there is our user form. And obviously at the moment, if we were to type something in here, someone's name, let's go Harry Potter, first one that comes to mind, and hit submit, you'll see obviously nothing's happening. It allows us to type values in here, but obviously it's not actually gonna let us do anything with that information. So let's just delete those out and close the form. And obviously you can see it was here, the little close button. Obviously that's just effective in that form for closing the form. So what we now need to do is we need to assign a macro to this button, which tells, well basically what executes some code so that when this button is pressed, it um, captures the information within these two text boxes and it places it, places it into our worksheet here. Uh, and what I'm going to do just to tidy this up before we progress is go first name. So we're just putting some column headers here uh, just so we can see where the information is going to go. And let's just make this uh, 12 in width. And just going to move that there. So just to move that button, uh, you can uh, obviously click on the button and move it. But my preference often is just to right click and hold, drag the button to where you want it. And then you can just do move here once you're happy with the location move here and let's just do a tiny bit of formatting not that it's really needed but um, I'm obviously just very particular about doing that so right we've got a button we'll open our form so we now need to code this submit button to do that I'm just going to double click on this submit button in the user form here and you'll see it's opened up some code to us so this is all the code that's assigned to the various aspects of our form and you'll see when I mistakenly clicked uh, double click label one earlier it's also created a subroutine for that as well we don't need that so we'll just remove that one um, all we're interested in is this command button one click here so this is going to be executed as soon as that command button one is clicked so the first thing, well, there's a couple of things we need to do. So we want our form, or we want this code to obviously capture the data and paste it into the sheet, but we also want it to identify obviously the each new available row. So if we had information in row two, we wouldn't want to overwrite that information. We want to paste our new data into row three. And if you've seen our previous videos, you would have seen us use this um, particular line of code a couple of times. Um, so if you want to go over it in more detail, obviously I strongly suggest you check out those previous videos. Uh, particularly the one focused on pasting data using VBA. Uh, but alternatively, we will be covering it off very quickly here, so you will probably get the grasp of how it works from this video. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we need to define a couple of variables. So first it's going to be an integer for our row number or our new row number and we're also going to be defining a reference to this worksheet. So the first thing we'll do is go dim i last row and again you can obviously call these what you want it's just obviously this is the choices I'm going for as define as integer. Next one I'm going to do is dim sheet one as worksheet. Okay, so we'll go set sheet one equals uh, let's go sheets sheet one, and then the second part is I last row. So this is obviously defining or finding and defining what our next available row is. So we're going to go sheet one uh, dot cells open brackets, and then again sheet 1, because obviously we want to count the rows within this sheet, so rows.count, and do that within column A. Uh, at the end here we've got dot end, excel up, dot row, plus 1. And as I've probably touched on in my previous videos, and again for this one, you, don't, you, can, you should hopefully be able to get a rough grasp of what this means. You're basically saying, within this sheet number 1 that we've defined, you want to do, you want to look at the cells and obviously particular cells being count how many are available or how many have got information in them. So obviously at the moment it should be one within column A and you want to obviously go to the end of that range. The reason we're doing the plus one at the end here is because at the moment this piece of code on its own would tell us the last row that has information in it. So that being obviously row one. I'm just doing the plus one at the end here so we can find our first, last row with data in it add one number to it to then, or add a row to it, shall I say, to find the next empty row. So that's what that piece of code is doing for us. Having done that, we now just simply just now need to store our data into this sheet. And to do that, we're going to go sheet one dot cells. So the first one we're going to publish or populate is this uh, one in column A here. So as we look at it, row number two. So our row index, so we want to use the row number obtained using our last row. And then we're going to go, and this column index is going to be column number one because we want to put the first name into column A. Dot value, so the value of this cell is going to equal text box one dot value. And this next part is going to be very much the same. So we've got sheet one dot cells, I last row, comma, this time column two, so column B. Dot value equals text box two dot value and that's it so that's now going to take that information and store what we've got in our text boxes and store it into these two uh, respective cells or columns and the last thing we want to do is this one single line of code is going to be unload user oh, user form one and hit enter and all that's going to do is basically it'll just clear the form so it'll just take all the information what's currently in our form so when this, obviously when these two lines of code read, what will happen is it's basically just copying the value, what you see in text box one, to obviously the corresponding uh, cell within our sheet. Therefore the information is still retained within the user form at that point. But by using unload user form, it just means that data is then gonna be cleared from the user form. So the next person who uses it is obviously gonna have a clear form or an empty form for them to use. I'm then going to just highlight this section and use tab just so it moves in so it's a bit clear, clearer and easy to read our code. And that is the extent of what we need. So just to go over that off, we've first created our user form, obviously by going insert and do user form. And using our toolbox over here to get labels and obviously our text boxes and our button as required. We've then gone into our module one by inserting it. And we've created a basic macro that just basically shows or goes user form one dot show. And that's triggered by clicking our open form button. Once that form has been loaded and you've entered our data or your required data, we've got this simple macro or a few lines of code here, should we say, uh, what allows us to understand or define the next row that has no data in it and then take the data stored in our text, our user forms text boxes and paste it into the correct corresponding columns within our sheet. So let's give it a run and see if it works. So we go open form and bring the form over. So first line we'll go Harry. And because our text boxes are in order, you can use the tab button to move to the next one rather than clicking. 
Harry Potter, click Submit, and you can see that name Harry Potter has been added to row number two. This time if we go open form again, so we go, this time we'll go uh, Homer Simpson, Submit, and you can see it's now added to that next available row. And maybe let's go one last name. Um, I can't even think, let's go first, <laughs> first and second. I really can't feel, think of any options to go there. First and second, submit. And you can see again, the more names we add onto this, the more this continually add rows to our data set in column A and B. And you probably notice, obviously, when you hit open form, you'll notice that first name and last name, obviously, are now blank because we did the unload uh, user form one at the end of that script. Uh, and we're not referred to end script, obviously, this command button one click. And one last thing I just need to thought to touch on because I happen to notice it is obviously as you moment you'll see we've got user form one written at the top of our user form at the moment. In order just to tidy that up a bit more, what we can do is if we go into our user form and we'll just go into the caption here, you see user form one, we'll put in here, uh, please enter name. And that way, obviously, if you want to change it to anything else, all you need to do is update this caption here. But you can see it's now updated on our user form. So if we do open form, again, it's now going to have enter, please enter name here, and obviously first name, last name. What just tidies that up a bit more as well. So we've got a couple more videos coming up using user forms. So going a bit more technical with how to work with these. Uh, obviously, we've only got two pieces of data here. But obviously, if you've got more columns information, and you wanted to say be able to double click into one of these options and open a form pre-populated with that information. Uh, like I say, that's going to be a subject we'll be covering off in one of those videos that are going to be coming up very shortly. To make sure you do not miss that video, please do ensure you are subscribed to the channel and hit that bell notification button as well so you're notified as soon as those videos do come out. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give the video a like as it's greatly appreciated by myself and also shows the videos that you potentially like to see more of. If you do have any questions at all please just leave a, a comment <laughs> below this video and I will get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.